Hey, what's up, YouTube? Red and Bordy here. Today, we're going to break down the hatchet, uh, one of the weapons we haven't done yet. We're excited to do that. But first, before we hop in here, we got something dope to show you guys. We now have a builder on New World Fans. We were working on this as a separate project, but we brought it over to our home on New World Fans and, and Taken, dude. He, he has got it all fixed up with all the current uh, iterations of attribute uh, bonuses, of weapon skill trees uh, as of the Amorine Expedition event. Dude, this is a sick builder, Bordy, and it, and I'm glad to have it on the website, man. It's, it's uh, yeah, going to be a ton of fun. We already have some people that have saved their builds. If you create a New World Fans account, you can go on there and, and create your build and show it off to everybody else by saving it. We've already got uh, a, a few over there already. And this thing just went live a couple hours ago. So uh, it's exciting, dude. I'm stoked. And, and we just happen to have, you know, the hatchet skill tree pulled up because, you know, that's what the video is on today. So, yo, dude, uh, yeah. big up to Taken. Uh, I mean, I know he works uh, hard on, on this uh, stuff and, and it's all exciting to have it up finally. He's a wizard, man. He does great work, dude, and it looks amazing. So it's yes, the ponytail, I mean, man. props. It is. It's that's the ponytail, that's bro. why we can't program the is because we lost our hair, and that's True. how. And that's how he, you know, that's why he can't. Yeah. Because he yeah, has hair. We're, yeah. We're just gonna go with that. Okay. Uh, all right, Bordy. Well, anyways, let's get right in here, dude. We, so the hatchet uh, in the preview event was one of the most powerful weapons, if not the most powerful weapon. Uh, so they went through some iterations, some changes, some nerfs, some buffs. So we're going to go through all the changes today on the video for you guys. Don't forget to hit the subscription button, the notification bell for more new world content like this. Tomorrow, our lore episode will be up as well. Uh, so if you're into the new world lore or maybe you're interested in getting into the new world lore, uh, hit that sub button and, and you'll get a new fresh uh, lore video tomorrow, which is which is Friday. All right, Bordy. Yeah. So we have two trees on the hatchet. It is the Berserker and the Throwing Tree. So right off the jump here, we have Feral Rush. It is a Berserker. It is the first skill in the Berserker Tree. A sprinting melee attack that causes the player to leap forward, hitting twice. The first hit damage is 100% of weapon damage, and the second does 115% of weapon damage, Bordy. It's a 12 second cooldown. This upgrades by dispatch. If the target is below 30% health, Feral Rush does 20% more damage and crippling strikes. If Feral Rush hits a target in the back, it causes root immobilization or wait, root comma, immobilizing the target for two, for two seconds. Yo, uh, so here we go, Bordy. The first ability uh, on the hatchetry, it seems to be a bit of an execute. It has that bonus for low health targets. Uh, but it does just seem like a general damage weapon or a damage ability. Yeah, yeah, nothing too incredibly crazy here, but it does do a, a quite a bit of damage whenever you start thinking about whenever you start thinking about doing an additional 20% more damage remember the below 30% health, then you're going to get 130% damage on your first hit and then you're going to get 145% damage on your second hit. So pretty good. I think this is probably going to be used as maybe a gap closer a little bit too True. since it's a sprinting melee attack uh, that, and, and you're going to leap forward a little bit. So yeah, it's a, it's a pretty solid ability, I think, to start off with. Nothing too crazy, but, but a, a decent ability, yeah. All right, the second ability we have for the hatchet is Raging Turret. So, performing four fast attacks, each dealing 80% of weapon damage. This upgrades with ag aggressive approach. Hitting a target with Raging Turret grants haste, increasing movement speed by 20% for six seconds. And final blow, press light attack at the end of the Raging Turret to deal a final attack dealing 115% of weapon damage. So, you know, a nice little combo with light attack. I like that mechanic. I hope they add more stuff like that in the future with, with ways to use your light and heavy attack to kind of uh, exemplify or magnify the damage or the ability that you're going to cast kind of weaving uh your basic attacks in with these abilities dude uh so what do you what do you think about uh raging turret i like it man it's 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 not anything too crazy either. I think it's probably pretty well balanced because you're only doing 80% of weapon damage. You are hitting four times, but I like the I like the concept behind it because the hatchet is supposed to be a very fast weapon. You're supposed to be kind of agile moving around with this thing, I think. Uh, and it's and it's just a very fast weapon. This thing 
I like the hatchet, man. It was very strong in the preview event. I didn't use it a ton just because just because of that. But I am a sucker for like one handed axes and hatchets in, in MMOs. And so this is right in my alley. And the fact this the play style that this gives is really fun. So that just sounds like a really fun ability to use. I don't know that it's going to be one of the stronger abilities for the, a hatchet build, but we'll see. Let's let's continue on and we'll see how it's going to fit in here. Well, Bordy, next is the big daddy, the one that everybody used and abused in the preview event and that is berserk uh berserk yeah. now it triggers a berserk mode that increases all attack damage by 20 percent while active uh berserk mode will be active for 15 seconds uh so there th this is a you are able to manipulate this with a, a type of a gem uh, we haven't yet i don't think heard of this gem but there's a gem that will increase your your aggro gain uh like they call it a taunt gem in the in the uh tool tip uh, but you can then use Berserk to taunt uh, uh, enemies, which I think is pretty interesting. Uh, so that is like a side note. So you could be a tank with the hatchet. I think that's interesting how they have multiple uh, side notes on some of these weapons that allow you to tank with them. What, what the other weapons were, uh, of course, Sword and Shield, but there was another weapon that we were kind of surprised by. I think it was Rapier that, that also has the taunt uh, notes yeah, on one the of their Carnelian abilities. Gym. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The Carnelian Gem was just introduced to the game and a couple patches ago, and that's that, that's just to play more in line with the tank and the healer and the DPS type of roles. So I, I think this is a pretty interesting uh, interesting thing to add to the hatchet because I think be, with with the hatchet and trying to go tank with the hatchet, I think is going to be very, very strong. I think that's going to be one of the sleepers that a lot of people maybe not. I, I think a lot of people, whenever they think hatchet, they're just going to try to push a lot into damage. But with them adding this Carnelian Gem, Gym on there it makes a lot of sense to go tank with berserk you can just you can take a ton of damage as we'll see here in just a second as we go through this tree i, I think it's going to be a pretty interesting style build for sure and then but then think about the other flip side of this red whenever you have on light armor and you do the extra 20 percent damage bonus with light armor and now you have 20 percent uh, while Berserk is active, like you're going to be doing a ton of damage if you're wearing light armor and you and you decide to go that route too. It's going to be awesome. Very true. All right, so here are the upgrades for Berserk. Uh, you have On the Hunt, increases movement speed by 20% while in Berserk mode. Berserking Refresh, whenever Berserker er, was Berserk ends, heal yourself for 30% of your max health. Uh, crazy, Berserking yeah. Purge, triggering Berserk, removes all crowd control effects and uninterruptible berserk while in berserk your attacks are uninterrupted during berserk and you cannot be staggered so you can kind of see some synergy with the tanking role here with uh you know dropping your cc uh, that's on you and then making your attacks which which then would generate uh aggro um un uninterruptible so you can continue that uh you know the aggro gain despite cc uh but yo know, this is going to be a really strong pvp weapon too even with the nerfs to berserk and and honestly, that the mechanic of Berserk was broken before. Basically, you pop it and then you can't die for like 10 seconds or however long that was. That's insane in any setting, uh, allowing you to deal damage way past your your hit points. So, uh, but overall, I think the the axe and the Berserk skill are in really good places so far. Yeah, I think so. I think this is still going to be an incredibly strong weapon. I don't think it's going to be quite as crazy as it was during the preview because of the stagger, but I still think it's going to be very, very good. Maybe one of the better weapons in the game because I think it's going to be really fast. I think you're going to be able to do a lot of damage. Berserk is still an incredibly strong skill. And then we'll see here in just a second with the, the last passive that we're going to read. It's still really, really good, I think. And I, dude, I want to use it. I'm, I'm ready to check this thing out, man. So here's the passive that Bordy's talking about. It's called Defy Death. Death. When you receive lethal damage, avoid death, reduce to zero hit points, and gain immortality for four seconds. So, you know, very similar to what was that, what was the end uh, node on the Berserk prior uh, to the changes to Hatchet. Uh, but this is your, your key passive at the very end that kind of all of these abilities have. So, Defy Death, very powerful when used in certain situations. And, and, and more importantly... I think uh, in the tanking role, because this allows you to, if you're going to take fatal damage as a tank from a boss or something, uh, you can stop your group from wiping by popping, or, you know, if you have your defy death uh, cooldown up, uh, you can, you know, honestly cheat death and your healer hopefully can top you back off after uh, that point. So I think it's a very yeah, strong tanking ability. 
Yeah, and then you think about using a potion on top of that, plus your Berserk and Refresh there in the Berserk line. So if you pop your Berserk before right before you die, you're going to be dealing a lot more damage. And then whenever your Berserk ends after 15 seconds, if you can kind of anticipate that and time that so that then your Defy Death can pop, you'll you'll heal for 30% of your maximum health at, from zero up to 30% of your maximum health. And then you pop a quick potion on top of that, man, you'll be topped right back off and ready to go. It's pretty strong. It's going to be pretty crazy to see some of the synergies between those abilities and how you can work work in a uh, kind of a, a heal after defy death it's gonna be it's gonna be nuts man it's a sh very strong facet yes yes sir uh, there was uh there was a, a suit like this in elder scrolls online that you got from the the raiding uh from the raid hellra uh citadel and it allowed your you know as a heavy armor set allowed you to cheat death uh and so you yeah know, this this mechanic reminds me of that shout out to my boy parfax he knows what i'm talking about uh, with that, with that suit. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyways, we're moving on here to throwing, uh, Bordy. Uh, so this is this is the unique thing, and this is the thing that, that most interests me about the hatchet. I love the idea of chucking axes across the <laughs> across the map at people. Uh, it's a very yeah. unique ranged uh, weapon. Obviously, this scales off of of strength, which is unlike you know a lot of the other ranged weapons in the game that mostly scare off of dexterity, such as the musket and the bow. Um, but dude, I, I love this tree and I, I could definitely see it synergizing well with, uh, the berserk tree, uh, on, from the berserk or the berserk skill from the berserker side. So let's hop right in here. Bordy with the first throwing is the rending throw. So throwing, a, throwing an ax deals 110% weapon damage and applying rend, reducing targets damage absorption by 10% for 40 seconds. So that's again, uh, really good as a tank you're you're um, taking or you're debuffing your target for your group to take 10 more percent damage that's a pretty significant debuff uh, here the upgrades targeted impact rend increases uh, to 20 percent and duration extend by six percent uh, if further than eight meters from the target so it rewards a, an accurate range throw opportunistic rending throw deals an additional 20 percent damage if the target already has an active debuff and second win using rending throw on a target with an active debuff reduces ability cooldown by 20 percent so here you go i know you're a fan of of uh dots Bordy, so i'm gonna let you uh take this away yeah, I, man, I like this a lot. And this is kind of why I was saying that Raging Torrent over on the other side on the Berserker tree was one that I didn't know if we were going to be able to work into the build or one that you might want to leave off of a build potentially because whenever you have Rending Throw sitting over here on the other side of the tree and it's the ability that you can get first right here just by putting one point in there, you have this thing that's going to reduce the target's, damage, the target's damage absorption by 10% and then you couple that with your Berserk and then your Feral, feral Rush, I think that would be a pretty solid build out of the gate it, not even not even specking into any of the passives yet but i i do like this because i am a big fan of dots for sure and i i i like this ability man and this is one that i think could potentially be almost a, a must have whenever you're maybe not a must have depends on what you're what you're trying to go for in your build but i, I do like this ability a lot man whenever it's coupled with some of the other ones in the in the uh hatchet trees Yes, and, and let's hop right in there for the next ability uh, to, to see what Bordy's talking about. Social distancing. I, I, I wondered if they were going to change the name of this <laughs> skill. I thought it was just a meme, but apparently oh. not. Uh, so far, it's still going to stick in there. Throw an axe forward and dodge backwards, dealing 120% weapon damage and slowing targets by 15%. Uh, percent, excuse me, so it's a, a, a distance or, or a... Um, disengage so to say and that slows your target pretty powerful uh for ranged abilities quick power is the upgrade to this ability power uh, player movement speed increased for 30 seconds or 30 percent by three seconds if ability hits a target with an active debuff and then stay back slow movement speed effects increases to 25 percent. that's from 15 uh for four seconds so you know this increase to your your movement speed and the decrease to your target Definitely helps out with kiting and 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 I guess social distancing if you want to pardon the pun there. But Bordy, Bordy, what are your thoughts on uh, social distancing the ability? So uh, this ability would be nice when coupled with something like the bow on the back bar or something if you're trying to kite your target around. I think, and this is specifically, I guess, from P from both standpoints, PvP and PVE, I guess. But other than that, I don't know that I'd work this into my build. It, the damage is it's 120% weapon damage. It slows your targets, but I think there's better abilities on the tree. I think this could be good in situational 
circumstances, but I don't think this is one that I would probably work in, especially in a PVP situation, just because it doesn't fit my play style. But I think if you're trying to go for ranged, it's just another option to be able to kite people around. Yes, I agree. Uh, you know, this could synergize well with your musket potentially, right? Or yeah. or your bow, but but uh, alone with some of these abilities uh, on the cooldown, we're going to see another really powerful throwing ability. It might be enough, Bordy. It might be enough to build some strength range build with this, and, and maybe throwing the yeah. spear there, and and there you go. So right. here depends we, on what your other bar is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So let's see. Uh, infected throw, and this is the one I was kind of talking uh, about, kind of right up your alley here. Throw an axe and deals 130% mm -hmm. weapon damage and triggers disease and weakens the target for five seconds. Uh, so that here we go. Here are the upgrades for infected throw here. Mortal power increases increased duration of disease and weakened uh, to eight seconds on target below 30% health. That's pretty insane. And then aerial transmission. Create a three... Uh, three meter disease AOE on impact that lingers in place for three seconds. So you can kind of see the synergy with potentially some of those abilities that we talked about earlier. That if you hit someone but from behind, uh, you root them and and immobilize them. If you can do pull that off, that combo with feral rush and an infected throw, you could have a pretty potent uh, ability combo there. Yeah, absolutely. I think that'd be strong in PvP, but then on the flip side of that in PvE, I think Infected Throw is going to be really strong there, especially for the mobs that heal. We do know that there's mobs in the game that chug health potions every now and then. Right. And so I think that if... I, we, don't, we haven't seen any bosses in, in the expedition jet that, that have a healing mechanic, but if there are some, I think this would be, maybe you could run some sort of tank build with the hatchet and then throw this Infected Throw on there as well for a little bit more utility. Uh, against against some of those mobs, and I think it'd be pretty good, man. I think it would def I think it definitely has its place. I like this ability. This is something completely different than what they had in the preview event. I think there was like a quick throw in there, and then there was like a heavy throw in there. I don't remember the exactly what they're called. And then there was right. just like a normal throw. So there's just three different types of throws. This is much much different. I like the I like the direction they headed with this. Adds a lot more utility to it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm dude, I like it. It's 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 a nice ability. You just have to figure out where to work it into a build though. Yes, very diverse. So here, here's yeah. the key passive for the throwing uh, skill tree in the hatchet. So it's called Persistent Hindrance. Successfully throwing axe hits, or yeah, successful throwing axe hits extends all hatchet debuffs durations by two seconds. Now this is important to remember because there is a passive in, in this tree that allows you to constantly throw uh, your axe. So you so you won't have to you can take te te technically excuse me you can technically uh, light attack and heavy attack with a thrown axe at this point so you know th this is a really cool uh, key passive one that you're definitely gonna want to take if you're using infected throw or uh, other abilities that kind of extend uh, the debuffs such as your immobilization potentially your rend which keeps someone weak. Uh, you know, you can chuck axes at these enemies and, and keep extending uh, those uh, pretty significant debuffs in the throwing tree. Uh, so overall, I think this key pass is, is pretty useful. I do too. It seems a little bit underwhelming whenever you look over here at Defy Death and then you come over here and you look at this persistent hindrance at first glance. But I think if you have a very good weapon on your front bar and you're using your back bar just to keep debuffs up, which I think would be very viable, I think that you would want to go persistent hindrance and just that way you can just keep your debuffs up almost 100% of the time, which I think would be really, really strong in PvP and PvE situations. So I think it is a good passive, man. It's an interesting one. And uh, yeah, and I like that too, man. Overall, I think this hatchet with all those abilities we just went through, looking pretty good, man. It's, it's looking like it's going to be a fun and very strong weapon to use. Yeah, and I'm excited to see. I, I'm excited to see how the meta plays out at launch because of all yeah, these changes. Yeah, me too. And, and, and obviously, PV, you know, when we played the preview event, uh, in I guess it was in August already. <laughs> uh, yeah, we we you know there wasn't a, what there was a, four less weapons right. You, the ice gauntlet's been added, the spear, the rapier, and then what is the the other one that has been added? Are those the, the only three? Uh yeah, I think that's it. Uh, I think that's it, right? Spear. Uh, no, that, that the axe, the great the great axe. Great axe. Yes, yeah. I knew there was yeah. four. I just couldn't think of the fourth one. Yeah. yeah. So, dude, we've added four new weapons and a complete re rework to all the weapons now. So it's going to be a brand new game for us all when we hop in there uh, for the closed beta 
in July. And it's going to be cool to see how everything shakes out and the builds that people can come up with. Again, guys, if you want to go and mess around with stats and, and weapon skill trees and stuff like that, go over to newworldfans.com. We got the builder up now. You can go over there. And even uh, if you create an account on the website, you can save your builds uh, and try them out during the closed beta. Um, it's going to be sick, dude. I can't wait to, to play the game again with everybody. It's yeah. going to be a ton of fun. Yeah, absolutely. And once the game is actually out and we're able to kind of get some builds together, we'll definitely be making our own builds and then probably doing videos over those as well. And then we can right. we can link those builds to the builder for you guys. So you can have them there. It's going to be great, man. Uh, I, I think we're getting close, bro. Yo, it's less than two months away to the to the uh, yeah. preview event now. Uh, you guys are getting this on May 27th. So, dude, it's insane how fast time goes. It, it, you know, it's been technically a year or more of a wait since we thought we were going to get the game. So it's going to be exciting. I just can't wait to play with our community. Uh, if you want to be part of our community, join our Discord as well. I would try to make sure we plug that because uh, it's cool to meet you guys and talk to you in Discord. Uh, if you're a YouTube viewer, uh, we've had a lot of people join recently. It's been popping off real, uh, real busy uh, people joining in, but it's cool to talk to you guys from YouTube. Uh, so please yeah. uh, join our Discord. And again, Bordy, uh, always fun to break down these weapons. I think we have a few left that we haven't done. So let us know in the comments below what uh, what weapon would you like to see us break down next? And uh, we will see you in the next video.